Welcome fellow chemists to the first video on the reactions of the alkynes. I have the alkyne reactions all planned out, so please reach out to me and suggest what I should do next. Your experience with the alkene reactions means you have a strong grasp on what we are about to cover, but I suggest watching the video on the similar alkene reaction just to freshen up anyway. Done? Let's get started with the addition of hydrogen halides. The basics of the reaction with an alkyne are identical to that with an alkene. So if we add HBr to the terminal alkyne pent1i, we end up with a substituted alkene where bromine lands on the secondary carbon, and that is how the reaction finishes. Sorry, maybe sometimes. The product is a substituted alkene, which is less reactive than the original alkyne. So when the ratio of alkyne to halide is 1 to 1, the monosubstituted product will be the only product of the reaction. With that in mind, take a moment and think about what would happen if HCl reacts with pent one in a 2 to 1 ratio. You saw the first bit a few seconds ago, and we get the substituted alkene. Getting here requires an intermediate I didn't show. Even with the substituted alkene, the hydrogen still adds first, and there is another intermediate. This is the primary one. However, we can make a secondary carbocation, which is more stable. This means the second chlorine lands on the same carbon as the first. The product is referred to as a geminal dihalide because the chemist that first described them was a gemini. Location, however, plays a major role in the outcome of the reaction. When we have a terminal alkyne, we choose between a secondary or primary carbon, which is an easy choice. When it is internal, it is always between secondary carbons, so how do we choose? Well, think it over and give it a go with two HCLs reacting with butyl-ion. The first bit is easy. It does not make a difference if you put the first chlorine on the left or right carbon because both are secondary and the product is 2-chlorobutuene. At this stage, no matter what you do, you get a secondary carbocation after the addition of the next hydrogen, so what's the difference? While on the bottom, the carbon bonded to the chlorine has no charge. On the top, it does. This means the chlorine can share a pair of electrons with the carbon it is bonded to and the charge switches places. This can just revert back, and then back, and then back, and, well, this resonance creates a more stable carbocation. We can add the chlorine, but we know now that the bottom molecule will not form as the intermediate is not as stable. So the product of this reaction is 2,2-dichlorobutane. The final consideration requires a closer look at the internal alkyne. In this example, hex 3 ion is symmetrical, meaning the chain on both sides is identical. When HBr approaches the alkyne, it can add to the left or right carbon, However, the second addition goes wherever the first one went, so we produce two molecules that may look different, but are both 3,3-dibromohexane. With asymmetrical alkynes like hex 2 ion the reaction proceeds differently. The first addition is equally likely to either carbon, however, since the location of the first halide influences where the second one goes, we end up with two unique products. Since the likelihood of the first addition is equal, the distribution of these two products is also equal. In summary, the addition of hydrogen halides to alkynes is extremely similar to that of alkenes. If only one equivalent adds, it more or less is the same with the obvious difference being the product is a substituted alkene. If there are two equivalents, and if the alkyne is symmetrical, both halides will bond to the same carbon with the end result being a disubstituted alkene. However, if it is asymmetrical, an excess of halide will result in an equal distribution of two dihalide products. Coming up, it's time to get radical with the alkynes. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe as I have more in development. In the meantime, check out these previous videos on radical reactions before the one on alkynes is posted.